Happy Monday. Fighting news here. Fighting news TV. We got a bunch of special guests here tonight. This is a great show. Uh, to begin with, we have Kat Nelson and Phil, Philly Fresh Row. How are you two doing today? How you, are you guys doing today? Doing well. How are you? Good, good. What's yeah, they can't on? hear me. I uh, wish we could hear Matt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they can't I'm, hear I'm, me. I'm going to log Matt off and have him log back in. Okay. Uh, cool. So what's going on? Nothing, just just hanging out. We're yeah. in uh, we're in Philly Fresh's garage. Nice. That's got nice uh, mats back there, Phil. Yeah, man. This is uh this is where Jockery caught Corona in here. Oh. <laughs> yeah, man. It's crazy. <laughs> Did you wash it the whole gym down? Yeah, I sanitized after that happened, but we're good now. Yeah, that's where Jockery. Oh, uh, that's funny. But um, that okay. was uh. Check one two. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. All right. Hey. Awesome. I just I caught the tail end of that. So Jack Ray was training at your gym before when he when he had the, the coronavirus, huh? Yeah, it all happened in this garage, man. He caught it from in here and uh that was it, man. So I had to sanitize and um hopefully no one here has it, you know? Yeah. Wow, yeah. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna go get tested or I'm totally joking, man. Um <laughs> But nah, Jock Ray, he lives close. I live in a, a Coe right by Fusion. He lives in Lake Buena Vista. Um, that's where all the rich people live. But um, he uh, he has the same setup in his garage like us. They're gone? No, we're still here. Oh, we're, okay, highlight okay. we're highlighting no, so you because you're the guests. Okay, so what? oddly enough, man, um, he actually was doing an extremely good job of quarantining, like to the point where – he didn't train with us. He didn't train with me. He didn't train with Julian. Uh, he didn't train with Hadolfo. He was just training with two guys he brought from Brazil and his coach. And he has three boys and a wife. So he was so paranoid about uh, the virus that we didn't train with him, you know? So Julian did a couple like virtual sessions with him and um, that was it. So literally since Early February, we hadn't trained with Jacare, so it's just so unfortunate because he definitely was looking forward to it, but he'll bounce back. Yeah, that that was crazy yeah. to me because he was taking pic selfies with people, no mask on. It was it was kind of weird, and and you know when Dana said somebody had to have it, you know you 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 know one out of certain amount of people has has to have it. No, Jacare, the, the clip yeah. I saw, Jacare had the mask on. There were other people in the room that didn't. No, yeah, yeah Jacare um, was super cautious about it. And, and like I said, it's weird. And I know a bunch of other UFC guys that actually have it or had it and it passed through their system. I'm not going to throw their names out there. But, I mean, in the same note, people make a huge deal about it, as we should, a big deal. But it's not – you're not – people do pass from it, you know, people that aren't – in the best shape, older folks, and it's sad that anyone passes from it. But in the same note, you're not terminally ill. You don't have lupus. You don't have stage four cancer. You know, it's it's very easy to, to catch the virus, hence why they want us all quarantined. Yeah. Well, it also has to do with the healthcare system. If they get too many people in the hospitals and the nurses get it and the doctors get it, then there's going to be no one to treat anyone. So that's, I think that's their big fear is that the, yeah. Yeah, the healthcare system's going to be overrun. Yeah, no, but I heard, yeah, they said Jack Ray told him, that, you know, as soon as he got there that, that someone in his family had it or whatever, and they tested him right away. So uh, uh, that was unfortunate for him, but yeah, you know. He'll, he'll, be, he'll be all right, man. He'll be all right. Like he, for the dude had the virus, right? And he cut 25 pounds. He said, Phil, I never felt better in my life. He weighed four hours later, he was at 206 pounds, you know? So it affects certain people. And some people are asymptomatic. Some people, you know, pass away. Yeah. From it. But what we can do is just quarantine and do our best not to, uh, to get it or spread it, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. And wash your hands. Wash your hands. If you're yeah. listening at home, wash your hands. Sure. And don't touch your face. Don't go like this without washing your hands. No, for sure, man. Six feet apart. This is how we're living over here, man. At all times. Body wipes. Oh, holy cow. I, that's the biggest thing of wipes I've By ever the, seen, man. By the tub, man. Defense wipes. Nice. <laughs>
So tell us about. Uh, all right. So Kat, you're you're going to be fighting XFN. It, it's uh, uh, May thirtieth, end of the month, and this is your. Is it your second MMA fight or? Yes. What? Okay. MMA fight. All right. How do you feel about it? I feel I feel good. I feel great. I'm I'm ready. I was ready when I agreed to to fight her. So. So we saw your um, we saw your kickbox kickboxing match against Nicole uh, Constanzer, and you did it. You great show there. Very technical. You you know very skilled and all that. Is your MMA game at the same level? What are we talking here? Well, I'm definitely a striker. I come from a Taekwondo background, and that's what you saw with Nicole. Um, I'm a little bit more experienced now, and I've been working on my grappling and my ground game. So you'll see May 30th. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, you're able to get in. Do you think you're able to get in the, the type of practice that you need now? even though there's this quarantine situation or would you rather have a full gym with with uh, multiple different training partners and all that yeah it's definitely not the same not having all those all those bodies to train with but i do i do like the training i've been getting now it's kind of on a day-to-day -day basis uh i'll hit up phil or some other teammates and see what they're up to and I actually think it's helped me become more creative. So, in what sense? Um, I don't have a coach telling me what to drill or what to do. I'm kind of just doing my own thing, making sure. Oh, <laughs> make there you go, <laughs> there you go. Well, it's going to be uh, it's interesting. You're you're at a you know a point in in your career that's. It's it's got to be um, nerve wracking, but at the same time, it's a growth uh, process, and it's uh, you know it's exciting. It's, this is an exciting point in your in your career. Yeah, everything is just about learning and progression. Right now, it's it's just the beginning. So right, and then yeah, and then if you go pro, that that'll be another exciting step. So uh, yeah. Yeah, but so you, I definitely want to be prepared when I go pro. So I'm going to get a few more, well, maybe a lot more amateur fights under my belt and go from there. And how old were you when you started Taekwondo? Um, well, I was born to martial artists. So my my dad is a Taekwondo master. Yeah, he's an ancient samurai, my father. <laughs> So, an ancient yeah, I, was, samurai. I was pretty much born into it. <laughs> 400 years old. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go ahead. So your father's a, a Taekwondo uh, master. He's a Taekwondo teacher. And then he started teaching you and you can walk. Is it that kind of thing? Yeah, and I've been around the the art my whole life. So people that, that share the same passion and that practice it. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, who else do we know that started as a Taekwondo person? Valerie, Loretta, down yes, there in American yeah. Top Team. <laughs> yeah, her her father is a was a is a, a Taekwondo teacher also. Yeah, my um, my dad actually knows him and her. So, Did you know that's you funny. Know? Yeah, that's funny because my nephew he's a black belt in Taekwondo. Also, he's eighteen years old. He's been doing it since he's like three and. His Valerie's father apparently did some stuff at, at at his school, which is over here in Palm Beach, you know, far away from their school in Miami. So I guess it's kind of a small community down here, yeah. the Taekwondo community. Are you um, from Palm Beach? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I live in Boynton uh, Beach and Steve is over there in uh, Wellington. Yeah. Okay. What's your, exact, what's your exact address? Your social security? Uh, it's classified. I'll give you that and my credit card number uh, after the show. Thank you. Order me uh, some pizzas you guys, here, you man. Guys I'm got, a lot of, <laughs> you guys are supporting a lot of your sponsors. I see the few, uh, Fuji mats. Uh, I see the R on the hats. What's the R? Oh, this is uh, Philip Rowe. Philip Rowe. Philip Rowe. Oh, that's, that's your yeah. logo. That's okay. Philly. Philly Fresh. Uh, all right. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, Philly Fresh. There you go. I got and Fusion. Colors. 
And and the shirts. No, this is oh, Fusion. This is Fusion, our gym. Fusion gym. Boom. Yeah. We but I'm also go. sponsored by Fusion CBD products. Oh, boom. And, nice. Uh, and still nutrition. Yummy. Boom. Plug, plug, put, put that, put it, put awesome. it close. Yeah. I don't know if I'm doing right. this. Give, give me still a shout out. That's my boy. He's a good dude. There you go. Great guy. And he's, he's, see not that? Just, he's not just with the big name guys. He sticks around from guys from amateurs to the big league. So he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Hold that up to the screen again. We got you on full screen now. Is it this thing right here? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah, to the camera. camera. Yeah, because we have you on full screen Very now. Nice. And still. Shout out to N still. There you go. Nice. I like it. Hashtag. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Taekwondo. So, what do you think of um, what do you think of uh, Karate Hadi's fight there in the UFC? Did you see it? I saw it. I honestly wasn't too impressed, but I mean, she did what she had to do against a, a wrestler, I guess. Yeah, it wasn't her best uh, performance, but you know, it's it's to me, it's always interesting when when the fighter takes that kind of sideways karate, you know, taekwondo kind of stance and and see if they can land anything from it. Like, certainly the guys are good at it, like um, uh, Wonder Boy and, and guys yeah. like that, and Leo Machida. Um, it's uh, yeah, but it's interesting though, because for a long time, people are like, oh, taekwondo is no good for the UFC or whatever, but. You know, every once in a while, you see someone land a spinning back kick or, or something, and then all of a sudden, it's real stuff again. I mean, yeah. uh, Bullet Valentina. Yeah. I think, too, with that, with the, like, the Taekwondo and all that type of fighting, like, the specialized skill sets, top keto and all that, like, you have to be very elite level. And there's people out there, uh, Uriah Hall, uh, Stephen Thompson, Anthony Pettis, uh, uh, who else we got? Um, I forget the guy's name. He's he had a he had really weird name, like Do Four or something like that. But and people try to adopt it, you know, and it kind of taints their game, you know. Um, you know. kind of got to be if that's who you are, that's who you are, you know. And with MMA, everything that like everyone copies everyone like immediately. So if there's like a new fad, people do it. Like when you watch Floyd Mayweather train, like he does all the shoulder rolling and people immediately gravitate to it and they go out there and people are shoulder rolling and get knocked out unconscious. Like what? Yeah, they never do it right. That's why. No, no. And if you watch even Floyd, if you watch him fight, like that shoulder roll technique, he, one, he's been doing his whole career, but two, he doesn't go out and throw a hundred punch combos. Like he's a real defensive guy. But I feel like those specialists, you can, uh, be good at what you do, but those guys are one in a million. You know, Stephen Thompson has over 80 kickboxing bouts. Uh, Uriah Hall has what over 60 kickboxing bouts, like creme de la yeah. You know, so you got to keep that into mind when you're practicing these spinning hook kicks and stuff that definitely is plausible, definitely can land. But the guys that you're watching doing it have a yeah. plethora of experience in what they're doing. And you have to time those, those spinning kicks are, are dangerous, man. If you don't time them correctly, or if you're if the other guy or girl is not stunned at the time, I mean they're just gonna they're gonna step right out of the way of, of, of those. You know, um, they're too easy to uh, to defend against, and you can see them coming from a mile away. But if you know if you're someone like Wonderboy Thompson or or Anthony Pettis, then you know, and he's a creative person, Kat. That's how you should you know. He, he comes up with his own stuff, you know, in the ring. He always had, um, not in his last showing, but early early on in his career, he, he'd do stuff that you've never seen before, like jumping off the cage like Jackie Chan and all that. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Well, John Jones lands l- l- some spinning uh, um, kicks and, and, uh, and elbows also a lot, you know. Yeah. So that's, uh, so that's all cool. So you're looking forward to the 30th. And you're fighting Gloria DaCosta. We had Gloria on the show. Um, what do you know about your opponent? What do you know about her? I don't know much. Um, I know she trains at the, the Goat Shed in Wynwood. Miami. <laughs> yeah, Wynwood. Nah. Yeah, uh, but nah. I, I've nah. seen that she's a she's a technical technical boxer. Um, I didn't see it. <laughs> 
but that's uh that's pretty much all I know. I know she's I know she's strong, and uh, you know yeah. I, I chose the fight because I I want a challenge and. Uh, She's a, she's a big girl, you know. I don't know. I don't know her. Like she's a big girl. She looks very muscular. She looks strong, but like skill set wise, I don't see it. You know, I don't see her. But once again, this is the early stages of their careers, you know. So they just gotta now get in and and, and get those numbers and experience and those the time in the cage under their belt. But I mean, it's a good fight for both of them, you know. I think she's has a little bit more brawn and muscle and. You know, but technique wise, I think I think Kat will be okay, you know. Especially coming to people. Um, she trains at a at a cool academy down there. Nice you know, what I mean, I, I see the people down there doing their thing, but as far as like the people that Kat gets to train with, it's insane. So you think about just that alone, like if you look at like when I came up, you know, I came up with uh the Alex Nicholson's, um Mike Perry, uh, Robert Chopper Reed, like 2011 was like the time I was coming up as an amateur. And I had a lot of amateur fights, I had over 16 amateur fights, over 15 kickboxing matches, a bunch. And my coach, Reese Hall, who's a black belt now under uh, Augusto Mendez, Tanquino world champion, he just won ADCC, shout out to Tanquino. He was a purple belt at the time. And like, we had dreams and aspirations of fighting in the UFC and fighting at a high level, but like, I didn't know elite level fighters to be around and train with in 2011. You know, like Mitch Kamali, Josh Man, rest in peace, Josh Man, amazing guy, uh, Jim Antlers. Those are like the only three guys, and they're like unicorns. You know what I mean? We like, no one trained with them really that I knew. So, and we still may do, but now it's a different, different day and age. You know what I mean? Like, so like now you got a gym like ours. You have the creme de la creme in our gym, you know, and like no one can and no one can dispute that, period. And the cool thing about our gym, you got guys like myself. Like I wasn't always winning, you know. Yeah. I started my pro career. I got to my gym at 0 and 2. Seven fight win streak. My coach brought me to the UFC. Um, and we got a ton of people, five people, new heads in the UFC in our gym. So you got young up and comers like Kat in a year's time you see the progression it's silly it's definitely you know? excelled the progression oh it's ridiculous you got you're on the mats with julian you're doing private sessions like my garage i've been training with five people five people are allowed in my house since this whole quarantine the same five dudes and you're talking uh three-time all-american you're talking ufc veteran you're talking uh elite level black belts like and she's been training for a year and this is the type of looks you get every day you know it's insane i wish i had that when i was starting off i'd be i probably have been in the ufc four years ago yeah, so I'm like really the, the fast track is going to be scary you know yeah, yeah. Well, that mean, talks you, you mentioned uh jim allers i mean and josh uh and josh at freaking two animals i mean damn yeah you know that's you know I, we go we, we went to uh a bunch of gyms and we see all the people that are, you know, around everybody, you know, a lot of successes, you know, that helps to up your game, you know? Oh no, for sure. You can't, yeah. you can't be around people like Julian Williams, you know, he's on a 11 fight win streak. He's 12 and one. You know what I mean? Like the guy he's on 11, all he knows how to do is win. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like just look at the people in our gym, look at the talent in our gym. And that's what you're around every day. It's so it it's so much talent in our gym. I would literally like second guess my readiness. I get beat up so much in my gym, and I'm going into a fight. I'm like, <laughs> I, I'm not playing. Like I get fucked up in my gym so much every day. So to the point where I'm going to a fight and I'm just like, damn. Like, am I ready? I get in there. Somebody grabs me. You think he feels like Adolfo Vieira? Fuck no, you know? You think he feels like Jacare Souza? You think he feels like Julian Williams? No. And no one will ever feel like those guys, period, you know? So when you got that in the room, literally some of the best grapplers to ever live and ever walk on planet Earth, literally, like, you can't lose. You literally can't. It's a winning recipe. Yeah.
I tell you, there's so much talent down here in South Florida. Like, uh, where, you know, where when Steve and I, at, we're in Central Florida. Central Florida. You, you're in Central Florida. Yeah, you guys are in Florida. I, yeah, I guess you're, yeah, you're down there. <laughs> uh, let me rephrase that. There's a lot of talent all over Florida there you go. because uh, it, it used to be we used to go to these local events, and you can count, you can almost guarantee that the fighter from American Top Team was going to win. Very true. To guarantee it, but now there's, you know, what's the name of your gym again? Tell tell everyone the, the name of your gym. Fusion, Fusion. XL. Fusion so XL. Gym, it's like a it's like a hybrid gym. Not it's not a hybrid gym. It's its own entity, you know. But Julian Williams is our head instructor. He owns a gym. He is a black belt under Paul Rodriguez, who's a black belt under Ricardo Laborio. Paul Rodriguez opened the first American Top Team in Orlando. So that was Paul, Jose Figueroa, uh, Seth Petruzzelli, Ben Saunders, Dean Thomas, like legends of the game. And that yeah. was in the 90s, you know. So yeah. we're a direct lineage under Ricardo Laborio. Nice. And didn't Dean just left, uh, didn't he just leave an American top team in Coconut Creek? Do you know where he's going now? I can't tell you, man. I can't tell you where here. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't tell you. I can't tell you where he's going. <laughs> You can't even give us a hint. <laughs> can't give you a hint. Nothing. <laughs> so that would be we, great, we man, for you the, guys, man. That would be great. We got the uh, the matchmaker that uh, set Cat's uh, fight up, Michael Maldonado, the Puerto Rican superstar. Uh, he's waiting in the in the back, and uh, he brought a guest as well, Jornel Longo. LB. Lugo, A one Lugo. A one Lugo. What's up, guys? What's up, Michael? Yo. What's going on? What's up? I don't see myself on the screen yet. <laughs> there you are. You're on. Cool. We got. Kat I can also. see myself now. Jordell's popping up. Yo. Can, can everyone hear each other? Yo, guys. Yeah. I can yeah, hear you. I can hear you. Yeah. Can you so, so, Michael, so um, Kat's got a hard fight uh, coming up. Hello? Yo, does she? Says I mean, Steven. I think it's even. Says Steven. I think it's even. Even Steven. <laughs> you know, um, with Kat, I see how she trains and all this stuff, and the trick trains hard, so see what happens. I think yeah. she does everything right, so. So the matchmaker's job is to, to get the most even fight there is. And that's, my, that's what I do. Yeah. As a yeah, that's, that's definitely Can't not talk. a matchmaker's job. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah we can hear you, Jordan. You're good. Yeah, so it, it's definitely – it seems to be a pretty even match, you know, from, from, from what I can tell, and we're definitely looking forward to it. Um, Kat and Phil, do you guys know Jordan down here? No. Yeah, I've known Jordan for a while. We went to high school together. Oh, get out of here, really? Yeah, man, yeah, we played in the same basketball team, so he's, we and him go way back. Oh, yeah? Okay, yeah, yeah. so, all right, so, uh, Phil, before we get to join now, for the people that don't know you, why don't you tell us what you're up to? Uh, Where I'm you're sure, up to man. in your career? Um, I, uh, I got... Who, me? I got signed to the UFC August 20th of last year, and... Um, I've just been training my ass off, man, and waiting for my debut. Uh, I've had a bunch of different weird things happen to me. I thought the UFC was a promotion that was ran seamless, but the UFC is actually just like any other promotion with fancy lights. Um, once the event starts, there's nothing like it. You know, once you get to fight week and check in and, Nothing is ran like the UFC in that aspect, but as far as matching fights and uh, getting booked, it's the same like regional shows, you know. So I've had a little trouble. Um, I don't, I, I don't really want to go into it, to, like say any names, but I've had a little trouble. I got slated April 11th to fight Cole Williams in Portland, Oregon. Um, everything was a go. We both signed. Fights ready. Corona happened. Uh, frustrating. So all these things um, are uh, playing against me in my debut. They reschedule. I'm supposed to fight in Jacksonville. Um, a week ago, Saturday, the week ago, uh, a week ago Saturday, my opponent pulled out. I didn't know he, he pulled out. 
Um, I the UFC knew, um, but they didn't tell me. So I, I, I think what they wanted to do was they were just trying to scramble to find me an opponent. But to me, this is my my life now. This is a business. So I'm not just going to, okay, Phil, you got this guy on four days. And even if I know I could stomp that guy, I'm, I'm not doing it, you know, because right. I've seen too many guys, close friends, come and go in a calendar year. I've seen too many guys take a split decision loss for no reason. And they're like, Phil, but if you get in there and you beat him, that's it. Yeah, you're right. I get in there, I beat him. I'm making preliminary pay. He's making 70, 80 bands to show up, you know? And if I yeah. lose, which is a very plausible, because all these guys, oh, it's war, it's war. I'm going to go, no, it's a 15-minute MMA fight. That's it. And I, if I lose, no one's going to remember in two weeks. I took the fight on a week notice, you know? Yeah. I, it's just going to be a loss on my shirt dog. So I told them, I was like, honestly, um, I'd rather, as soon as my opponent pulled out because he wasn't training, no one's training, um, just tell me right away. So I told them, hey, I want to wait for my opponent that signed that contract, that I agreed to fight, he agreed to fight me, and who's no slouch by any means. Guy's 11-2. and two, uh, He went on an eight-year uh, streak where he didn't lose a fight, has over 100 wrestling wins at Iowa, but this is the guy that I've been preparing for. This is the guy that I'm going to stop in front of everybody, so this is the guy that I want first. Then we'll go from there. So. Um, I'm hoping June, Fight Island, they'll throw me on there. I'm just waiting on this this chubby boy to get on the elliptical in his garage and lose his weight, you know? <laughs> June? You think nice. June, Fight Island's going to happen in June? Oh, it's going down. Yeah? It's going down. But I just want I want to be a part of all that, you know? So my guy, he lit, he's a great guy, man. Um, but he's chubby, you know? And that's just the way it is. So he can't fight because he's literally, he says, I have no one to train with, blah, 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 blah. So I said, hey, man, can you be ready in June, man? Let's get it on in June, man. He's like, okay, I think I can be ready in June. So his management's been talking to my management. And uh, UFC Portland, Columbus, and Brooklyn are their priority to be rescheduled. Brooklyn already just got rescheduled. So um, I'm just waiting to get on, man. Just waiting. Yeah, so I but you were you were on the contender series, you know. I would think that your stock would be uh, a little bit higher now with the UFC, you know. I mean, they do. They definitely show me love, you know. Like, um, they definitely show me love. I don't feel like uh, um, they definitely show me love. Uh, I definitely feel like I'm a part of the UFC. They send the body armor truck to my house every day. Drop off all this stuff. Um, nice. Their staff is absolutely tremendous when it comes to, like, taking care of things, emailing you back. I can email someone right now, literally within, literally 15 minutes, I have a response. Like, literally. Like, the turnaround time on everything is, like, instant. So, um, they do take care of me. They make me feel like I'm a part of, part of uh, their organization. I just want to get in there and throw a punch to solidify myself so people think they don't confuse my TikTok videos and my goofiness online for me not being able to... <laughs> To go in there and smash somebody because you know what I mean? I can't. I know where my skill sets lie. I know who I train with. I know what I do against elite level guys. And I know when I get in there, they're going to be shocked to see this tall, skinny basketball player in there putting in work. Yeah, I hear you, man. Well, we look forward to uh, to seeing you for sure. And you're an excited, that's an exciting uh, part, you know, place for your career as well. So the two of you are both in, you know, even though. It, it's two different places. They're both very exciting places to be in your career. Sure. You know. I missed amateur days. I told him to enjoy it because it goes by quick, you know. Then she yeah. have a whole new uh, a whole new set of problems to stress over and have anxiety over. But when it's when you're an amateur, it's fun, you know. It is fun. It's fun. Yeah. Cause because you're not getting there's no money involved. You're not getting paid for it, you know. Well, I wish. So, I wish I was. <laughs> yeah. So once you start Eventually. getting paid for things, then people uh, then people expect more from you. Very true. Um, yeah. So, Mr. Maldonado, Puerto Rican superstar. Oh. All right. Yeah, doing a, a good job with those matchups at XFN, that's for sure. Um, and it looks like you got a, a good matchup for Cat there on the 30th. So what else is going on? What news can you share with us? Oh, shoot, man. Um, 
What do you guys want to know? <laughs> well, we don't know. We don't know much about the XFN card. Okay. You know we got about, 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 about 12, 13 matches going on May 3rd, May 30th. We're great. Got a 155 tournament that's going on. You guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. 155 tournament. Yeah. Um, a little snags with the, you know, the virus, the gym's closing. So, we're going to record a bit on May 30th. Uh, we'll have another show in July. Uh, the other half, though. It's like a wannabe. Oh, I'm not going to say wannabe. It's an amateur Grand Prix type deal. Okay. Yeah. And then the winner will get a title shot and. Probably beginning of next year after a tournament's done. Are you involved in any other shows coming up? Um, no. Uh, the only thing I do, I work um, exclusively Rex with N, X Fed, and I help the guys at my gym at Combat Club and Jupiter Boxing Club uh, find matches. That's all I really do. Okay. Well, yeah. Probably, what about your podcast? You still doing that? That's on hiatus at the moment. Okay. Yeah. We'll go. We'll come back eventually. A lot of yeah craziness, you know. My my co-host Evelyn Romo, she broke her leg. Um, we had some. Everyone had family issues, unfortunately. So we're just you know just coming back. We'll come back. Okay, cool. And I'm I'm, I'm a little bit interested in that picture behind you. It's like half guitar and, and half uh, naked lady. What's going on there? Kind of, sort of, man. If, if that's what I thought it was. So, there it goes. yeah, it's inter <laughs> and then there, interesting. And there's, like, you know? and there's a dove on top. Yeah, there's a dove. There's a lot of stuff going on in there. Yeah. Do you play the guitar? Are you guitar? Uh, no, no. It's just a cool picture. Yeah, it's a cool picture. Yeah. Should have had a picture okay. of me instead, but not nah, joking. <laughs> that would be a big picture. That's uh, yeah. You'd have to have yeah, an man, eagle like Steve's to uh, have a picture like that of you. So, uh, <laughs> I'm really excited for this card. It's going to be the first show after the pandemic in South Florida. Or during the pandemic. It's not, the pandemic's not over. So. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, actually, I'm wrong because Titan is the day before us, so they beat us by a day. Yeah, Titan. And then... Uh, yeah. Well, there there was something on uh, last week that combat. Uh, night or yeah, something. but I was talking about yeah. South Florida. South, South Florida. Florida. Yeah. That was in Tampa. Yeah. South Florida, Miami, Winwood area. It's gonna be an interesting event. Gonna make sure everything's fine. Got a lot of extra stuff to do to make sure everyone's safe. Yeah. Everyone. Got to yeah, take so temperatures. Make sure it's super clean. Um, have the extra doctors. Doing testing and all this crazy stuff. Uh, it's gonna be yeah. It's gonna be a busy day. I wonder what the commission's gonna do if they're gonna have the same refs and the same uh, commissioners down there because it's it's two fights in the same weekend. I'm you know? pretty sure that's exactly what's happening. Yeah, that'd be interesting to see if they do that. Because it is kind yeah. of a risk when you think about it, you know, it, it, to go from one place to the next. But you know, they uh, they're, the, they're the experts; they know what they're doing. Well, I don't even I know don't, where the Titan shows at. Uh, I'm not sure where Titan where Titan is either. They could, I mean, I'm assuming it's still in South Florida. Yeah. So. Um, Hopefully we can. Yeah, I, I don't know for sure. Yeah, we, we want to try and get uh, Lex and a couple of uh, guys that we know are fighting on his card uh, coming up this week also. So we're gonna, we'll try and get the scoop. Yeah, because right, I have no guys for my gym fighting. So, hey, Lex, Jornell needs a fight. Jornell needs a fight. Jornell, what's going on? <laughs> what's up, man? How's everything? Everything's yeah. good. Can you hear us now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So yeah, you want to fight to get on that Titan card, Jornel? Yeah, maybe. Let's let's see. You know, I either fight on the Titan card or on the CES. 
one or the other. Or Bellator. I don't know. We'll see. Have you ever fought for Titans? No, not yet. Yeah. And well, what's up with Bellator? Are they, do they have any fights in, in, in the works? Or are they planning anything or what? I have no idea. That's the thing. Like, with um, with everything being like no no crowd, I'm wondering what's going on. But I know they don't fight in Florida. But um, I'm not sure. So I hope I can I hope I can get in one of those cards. Or can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah we can hear you. And in, in fact, someone just did something that got rid of a, a lot of background noise. So whatever you just did, and whoever that was, thanks. But go go ahead, Jordan. What were you saying? Oh, yeah, but I was just saying, like, um, so, yeah, hopefully I can get on either Bellator card or the CES card or the Titan card. Preferably Bellator, obviously. They pay better, but. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but yeah, I yeah. Fight, you know? I'm training too much to not fight. Yeah, I have not heard a thing about Bellator. I haven't seen a thing yeah. about them in social media, nothing. Oh, they yeah, on yeah. every event. Did you hear that background noise? My bad. Was it the fan, I think? Yeah. Well, I don't yeah. know. It would, uh, we, if we you just. It off. Thank you, thank you. Oh, my bad. Okay. No worries. Yeah, no worries. I had no, I had no idea what it was. Um, yeah, so, Jornel, we really want to see you back in action. All right, you're an exciting fighter for sure. And uh, I, I can imagine what it's like just sitting at home there just wondering, when am I going to fight? When am I going to fight? When am I going to fight? Yeah, I thought I was going to be a lot more active. I, had, I was on a roll there for a little bit. I fought it last May, then I fought September, and I fought October. And then I was supposed to fight in like December, and then one thing led to another. I wasn't going to be fighting until like March, and then coronavirus hit, and there you go. And I'm out eight months already. Like it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, you gotta you gotta keep working out and keep uh, you know. Yeah, not I mean, that you look like, like we're, in camp. we're always training like we're in camp, regardless, trying to get better because you can always keep getting better, but still want to yeah. be active. You don't look like you're sitting on the couch eating bonbons and watching Netflix all day. You know, that's that's for sure, Rich. Um, no, I mean, besides training right now, that's what I'm doing. I, I just eat whatever and just sit around. I just train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually about his Chick-fil-A diet. I mean, Chick-fil-A? I, I'm getting bored. Right? So I'll be trying to go to different places to eat. Man. Chick-fil-A, yeah. Diet, you ought to just get some Wheaties. Breakfast of champions and, you know, Spartan lifestyle. Chicken, brown rice, vegetables. Hey, how, how, how old are you, Janelle? 24. 24. How old are you, Phil? I'm 36. And, and you played in the And they went to high school, school together. I'm lying. I'm totally joking. I'm I, I never know when you're serious or not. I'm sorry, man. I'm, just, uh, I'm, I'm like, sorry. I'm like, wait I'm, a second. Wait a second. I'm 29, man. I'm See, but I picked right up on that. Uh, I picked up on it, but uh, you know, this guy's twice my size, so I don't want to. Say that. <laughs> I was like, I was like, that's a lot of years to get left back, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, um, you know, we, we had a, just had an event. Dana White said, let's, let's go. Let's, uh, let's do this in Jacksonville. UFC 249. Um, you know, uh, Cejudo Triple C retired after winning. Uh, I thought that was, I didn't know that. I didn't see that coming. That was amazing, though. Yeah. Great way, yeah. Way Honestly, I'm, I'm going to miss him. I, I know, I, I, I know. You know, I, I said the other night I wanted Dominic Cruz to beat him just because of his, you know, his personality and his yeah. cringiness and, and all that. But I'm going to miss the guy, really. You know, he's definitely an exciting fighter. Um, but I don't think he's, I don't think he's gone for good. I think he just wants more money. I think he's pulling one of those. He's going things. to WWE. You think so? Yeah, I mean. I think he's done. You know, uh, he retired early from wrestling. He won a world title at 21, a gold medal, you know, yeah. and he stopped wrestling. I think, honestly, just opinion, I think he's going to go back to wrestling. I think he's going to try to climb the Olympic ladder now um, because that's a challenge. I think it's 10 times, 20 times harder to get a gold medal in freestyle wrestling in the Olympics than it is to win a UFC belt. So I think he's just out chasing gold in, in every way he can, you know? 
Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. We've spoken to some of our guests about that before, what it takes to be a high level, like a Division One wrestler, let alone an Olympic champion. Um, you know, the no, training I mean, and the discipline and that, that those guys go through is, you know. I mean, I mean, I – and that's one thing, you know. Um, you, MMA fighters train hard, you know. Um, oh, absolutely. I, I absolutely. think – I think – I think uh, the mental fortitude in some fighters I know is bar none, just on another level. You know, um, I try to hold myself to that standard. You know, I think my mental toughness and abil ability to push through adversity is some of the best. You know what I mean? I think that's what um, got me where I'm at now. But um, in wrestling, the, why it's so hard to me is because there's so many people that do it. You know, there's there's hundreds of thousands upon millions of people that are wrestling with you. You know, there's hundreds and thousands of people in high school with you. There's hundreds and thousands of people that are trying to get the same scholarship you're trying to get. You know, there's hundreds exactly. of thousands. You know what I mean? So that's what makes it so hard. And only yeah. one person wins a gold medal. That's it. So it's so hard. And like people can't really grasp how hard it is to be a gold medalist. In freestyle wrestling, you know, so for him to walk around with it all the time, everyone say it's cringeworthy, this and this. Go win a gold medal, you know, and you walk around with it. You know what I mean? But I think it's a hell of an accomplishment. I'm not even a wrestler, you know. Yeah. I think if Dana White said, "Listen, we want you to come back," here's ten million dollars. Ten million dollars, he comes back. Of course. <laughs> he's not of gonna course. get ten million dollars. Why gonna get ten million? <laughs> of course, no question. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson, 54 years old, is getting 20, $20 million offers. I don't – and the thing with Mike is I love Mike Tyson, man. I don't want to see it, but he's kind of in a position to where he has to do it in, in a sense of what he's been through, you know? Like, his, if you look at his whole career, you guys yeah. probably were watching him when you, when you guys were – my age. I know you guys are like 60, 70 years old. But right. when you look at when you, when you look at We gotta have this my, guy out again, Steve. <laughs> but um going being a world champion at twenty years old, uh going to jail for rape. It's it's sad that it happened, but he went away, he came back and ups and downs of his career, losing over three hundred million dollars. You know, like he's been through the ringer, you know, and he's slowly then he then he had his biography. He you know what I mean. He let it all on the table. He's trying to rebuild himself, and now the money's gone. Now he's slowly building himself back with the lead farm and all this. And now I think it's cool that he has an opportunity again to solidify like some generational wealth for his family. You know, even yeah. though it sucks, I don't want to see him. He's taking a lot of attrition. I don't think it's smart for him to get in there now, especially you're talking Shannon Briggs or something like that. Like I think a Roy Jones would be cool. I know Roy Jones. He's a great guy. Um, I think they can get in there, mix it up, and nobody can get hurt. But when they're talking like guys like Shannon Briggs, like Shannon Briggs, I mean, he's still screaming, let's go champ every day. The dude's like 42 years old, you know, probably he got his traps out here now. I just don't want to see Mike That in is there. 48. Yeah, but still, you know, yeah. I, I think – I don't think he – any fighter will tell you. He looks great on pads, you know. I just – he just can't take attrition anymore. At that age, he's not going to be able to take damage, you know. So it looks good, you know, but he can't take damage, you know. So it won't be good if he's in there getting hit, you know. So, but twenty million, yeah. fuck, you kind of got to do it, man. Well, the the other thing is Shannon's been actively fighting this whole time. I mean, I, he had his last professional fight. I think it was just three years ago. Yeah, I know. And he had been fighting since then. And he's act he actually holds the record for first round knockouts. No, he's a former world champion. He's no yeah. he's no cab driver here. You know, you're talking about a uh and a big heavyweight world champion at that. Like the one of the guys that teeter on the end of the, the scale, you know, so they were they were dabbling with names like that. I love Mike Tyson, man. All those guys paved the way for us, but I'd love to see him grab that 20 mil. Um, I just don't want to see him get hit, man. I don't want to see him take those shots right now, man. But Yeah, you know, see, man. that's Jornel, the thing, right? Jornel, what do you what do you think about uh, Mike Tyson coming back? I think he's bugging. 
Exactly, man. <laughs> nah, but look, but hey, look, one thing though, um, I want to go back to that last statement that he said about wrestlers uh, getting a gold medal is 20 times harder than a UFC becoming a UFC champion. And the reason why I disagree with that is I feel like there's not that many politics that go into wrestling the way it goes into getting to the UFC. Like in the UFC, or like to get to the UFC, there's a lot of people who are good fighters who never even make it. There's a lot of people who um, are good fighters, and for whatever reason, people don't want to fight them. Like you don't have as many opportunity to fight all the time. Like I know plenty of good fighters that they can't get a fight, and they fight twice a year. Or they're great fighters, undefeated, still not yeah. in the UFC, still not in Bellator. They don't sell enough tickets. People don't want to fight them um, because of the politic aspect, not physically, but. Just on the politics side, I feel like it's still really difficult to get a UFC belt. Like it's not that so easy. So look, here, here's why. Here's why. So literally, that statement. Here's why. It's just what you said. My coach is one of those guys, and like he said, we know, I know, and he knows so many guys that belong at the elite level. That for whatever reason, politics aren't there. You know. And guess what? I'm happy. Guys like my coach aren't in the UFC. Cause they will beat the shit out of me, you know. Like, <laughs> there are so many good. Like you don't understand, and and honestly, I feel, I feel bad that obviously I'm joking, but guys like my coach, I want him there. He's twelve and one. He literally, he hasn't lost a round of fighting in eleven fights, and total domination, absolutely annihilates people. And he's not there. Why? He doesn't like to talk junk. He doesn't like to disrespect his opponents he's not really a polarizing type of dude he's just a humble low-key guy mm -hmm. does he so have a manager you, he knows. does he have Say a again. manager huh does he have a manager of course he has a phenomenal manager it's who's not the that manager? Kind of who's the manager it's it's not that's irrelevant he because he's at this point dude julian williams uh we julian uh jockery Sosa versus chris weidman we went to new york jockery knocked out chris mm -hmm. weidman we went in the back um Jacare and Dana were talking. Uh, Julian's manager says, "Hey man, what's up? Is he too old? Is it?" Is yeah. it? Dana said, "No, he's not too old." He says, well, "What is it?" He goes, "Nothing." He goes, "Julian, you ready to fight?" "Yes, I am, sir." "Hey, you're in." Jacare, my gift to me to you, your your coach is in. Hand out here, shakes his hand. We take a picture. That was 2018. Julian had that fight then. And look, am I knocking Dana? No, of course he's he he books Conor McGregor. He booked John Jones. He has a million things going on in his head. But once again, just like Jornel said, there's numerous guys that belong there that aren't. But the thing with wrestling, and I'm not a wrestler. I don't like wrestlers. They just hold you down, and they don't want to fight you. But you got you to get them off you. But anyway, in wrestling, D1, every time you go out there, this is why I respect it, every match is here. Everyone's good. There's no easy wrestling matches, you know, especially at that high level. Internationally, every match is against one of the best guys. Every time you're going out there, it's 100 miles an hour, you're grinding. There's no easy matchups. So the whole way from high school to international level wrestling, it's just grind, hard match after hard match after hard match. And yeah, MMA, I agree with that. Only thing so I'll say this, like, let's say if your skills are up to par, if you are the best, Yes. I prefer to be able to get the opportunity to fight over and over and over and over to prove I'm the best. Whereas if you're the best in MMA, you still might not get a championship just because you're not going to get the opportunity. Whereas in wrestling, you guarantee if you're the best, you guarantee to get the gold medal. You see what I'm saying? Yes, but look, I, no, I get it. That's that. I, I, now I get what you're saying. Yeah. I get what you're saying because I'm not the guy that doesn't get the opportunity. So if if I was the guy that didn't get the opportunity, I get it. I get it. But that's kind of. That's a great area. You know what I mean? It's, I'm, it's, it's not a physical thing. You write about the physical part. It's not a yeah, physical thing. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes, sense. that makes sense. I, I, I get what he's saying now. So I, I kind of mistook that. But yeah, so he's saying like, I may not even get the shot. If I could be the best dude in the world, I may not even get my opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so that's what makes it tough. It yeah. makes it hard, but that's, I still think that's a little gray, you know, but I get it. I totally it, it, it. it makes it tough in a way where, that you can't even do it. Exactly. 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 That's exactly. Like, that really tough. You just got to sit there and hope. Pray. I, know a lot of <laughs> guys, know? I know a lot of guys, aside from my coach, that are just fucking great fighters. Like, and they just will never, it, it's sad, but they'll never get that call. You know, like, I know a guy in my gym, Junior Buscapet. 
he fought Justin Gaethje. If you look at Justin Gaethje's like close fights, I think beside the two fights he's lost, he gave Justin Gaethje hell. He went on the he went on the Ultimate Fighter in front of day and beat the shit out of everyone, and they didn't bring him in the house. So it's like, I it's weird. He went in, he cleaned up the tryouts. They brought him in for exhibition, cleaned up his guy in the exhibition round, and then they they brought in the guy he finished on the show. So I, yeah, I see ju- it, man. Justin, Justin Gagey, you know, we saw him in the World World Series of Fighting. He dominated that whole league. And when I mean dominate, he dominated World uh, Series of Fighting. And, uh, and, you know, he was like 15, 16 fights, and no one beat him. And, and he was killing everybody. And, and he didn't get a phone call until he could, he could have had him in years ago. Years ago. Dominating. I, lo- I love Justin Gaethje. The, dominating is not a good word. Um, but he beat everyone. Yes. yes. He beat every last person he fought yeah. in, in World Series. Every last one of them. Yeah. My, 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 Babu my, gave him a tough fight. Louis Palomino gave him a tough fight. Yes, and he it was, did. It was, you, if you watch that and, fight, and, and it, it was awesome. Like, like, how would you not bring both those guys, not in World Series of Fighting, but for UFC? Here you go. Here's a rematch. We, we want to show UFC fans. Yeah, but the, the World Series of Fighting had to be willing to let him go. They might have had a contract with him. You know? I don't know. Very, very true. Yeah. But where's yeah, the World Series, World Series of Fighting, of fighting where- now? No World Series of Fighting were letting their fighters go to UFC easy. Yeah. Well, you think about it. But they're PFL now. They're PFL now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're PFL. Yeah, they're PFL. Well, now. Marlon, Marlon Moraes, we used to see back in the day there, and, and Jessica Aguilar. So. Yeah, Marlon um, Moraes used to baptize guys in that league. He didn't belong in there. It was cheap. Yeah. Like Those two were my favorite. Moraes and, and Gaethje definitely were my favorite fighters. And then they were. Yeah. You know why? Because they both they both had their leg attacks down, you know? And there's so many fighters at, at every level, the amateurs all the way up to the UFC, that win fights with leg kicks. They just sit there and they, they attack the, their opponent's legs until they can't hardly walk anymore, and then they uh, they finish them. Is, you Pat, know? Pat, is, uh, is Aaron Walker a friend of yours? No, we don't know who that is. No idea. <laughs> why? He's he's asking uh cat to do a uh, Kodak black pose. Can can you respond back and say we don't know who you are? <laughs> he heard you right there. We he can he can hear you. Aaron Walker. He should be at, he should be at Fusion mopping the match or something. We have not heard. Uh, a- Yo, turn a- man. I just I didn't I didn't know who you were, man. I just checked out your Instagram. I got I got to get you in the cutoff, man. I I don't think you did. I don't think you messed up with me, man. But with what? I hear, if I hear? With the, I don't think you messing me with the scissor work, man. <laughs> How long you been cutting? Since I was twelve. Oh, see, I I, I only cut for like two months. Oh! <laughs> oh man, you <laughs> Look, you you all right though? You all right? Hey, give me the, give me a year. I'm gonna be the goat. Ah, oh, God! <laughs> you look, you are right, one year. It's gonna be. <laughs> it's funny because I be, I, what you said. I've been cutting my own hair for like seven years, though. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, nah. So you've been cutting for seven years. I don't, yeah. it don't matter. Just, so I, like, I never watched a YouTube video. I never watched anything. I just cut my own hair, faded right. my own head. Just off literally, my eyes. how I started cutting hair when I moved here from New York, I just cut my hair. That's all it was. And I just kept doing it since sixth grade. And I've been cutting since I was 12. I'm going sh- to tag you on my, um, I'm going to show you my barbershop. And it's in my house. And I don't like, uh, I don't have it for like a business per se. I just have it like because I enjoy cutting hair, you know. So I just my boys will come over That's and I cut them up. But it's yeah. not like on some me trying to profit anything. I'm just I just like cutting hair, you know. Where Where are you from That's in New York? Yeah, it's good timing. I'm from Brooklyn, East Flatbush. But I grew up East in Flatbush. Jamaica, Queens. Okay. You, you uh you watch the uh, Gravesend new series about Gravesend Brooklyn? No, is that on Netflix? Yeah. All it's I on, watch is it's Martin, on Amazon uh, Fresh Prince and Family Prime. Matters. I haven't seen Amazon none of these Prime. shows. Prime. Who watches Amazon Prime? <laughs> hey, hey, Steven, the only shows I watch, Martin, Fresh Prince, and Family Matters. I haven't seen any new show ever. I haven't seen one episode of Game of Thrones. I haven't seen Breaking Bad. None yeah, of these weird shows those? on Netflix. I refuse to be a part of this. This they're not weird. We, they're all yes. weird. I don't I don't mess with none. I watch Living Single. Hanging with Mr. Cooper. I watch all them shows still. 
So, yeah, not, not so legit. I just watched Angel gets a Cooper like a few days ago. Word. That's what's up. <laughs> you like the oldies, man. That's old it, man. All the time. Frank, so you're Frank, from New York. York. I'm from the 80s and 90s are amazing. All right. So you're from New York, but you're doing the Philly Fresh thing, and that's uh, – what's what's that about? Is that the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air reference, or what are we talking about? How'd you get that nickname? It's so one, my, my mother and my friends, and they call me Philly, right? My name's Philip, they call me Philly. But my very first fight, how I got my name was uh, my coach Reese Hall. I fought in Bike Week Beatdown in 2011, and it was in Daytona Beach. And he was, I was mad nervous. I was so scared. I was freaking out. So he told the commentator to come up to me and mess with me. So the commentator came up to me right before I went out. He said, Hey, man, what's your name? I said, Philip Rowe. He goes, no, 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 what's your fight name? And I said, I don't have a fight name, sir. My name is Philip Rowe. He goes, you need a fight name or you can't go out there. And I'm like, bro, I didn't know, man. I'm just, and I'm about to pee myself. And I'm like, bro, I didn't know, man. I just, they told me to, I'm, I didn't know. He said, man, if I, I come back in 20 minutes, you don't got a fight name, you can't go out. And I'm like, oh my gosh, Reese, why didn't you tell me I needed a fight name? So I'm freaking out. And he comes back and he goes, hey, what's your name? And I said, Philip Death Row. And he didn't know I was going to hit him with that. And I didn't know I was going to hit him with it either. And he was like, I like that, man. I, I actually like that. But it's my coach bad. goes up to him and he goes, hey, man, that's the Fresh Prince, man. That's the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. And just joking. So when he announced me, he said, Phil the Fresh Prince, bro. And then ever since that, everybody just called me Fresh. Isn't there a Fresh yeah. Prince dance? <laughs> that's a cool story. <laughs> yeah, it's very funny. No, it's, it's the Carlton. <laughs> The yeah, Carlton, Carlton dance. dance. You know it's what the... I do that? <laughs> nah, I'm not doing that for you. You crazy? I'm not dancing for you, white man. You want me to dance with white man? Like <laughs> oh, <it's not. laughs> you crazy? My ancestors uh... rolled in their grave. <laughs> <laughs> when you guys think about the, the, the uh, Dominic Cruz stoppage? Uh, Dominic Cruz stoppage? Um... Yeah, what do you think about that? I don't know, man. I'm on, I'm really on the fence about that because. And watching it in the replay, I was against it because it did look like he was getting up. But from the ref's point of view, he just took a horrendous knee to the head and he got, you know, he got hit with, out of those 11 shots that he threw, he probably got hit solidly with, what, like four maybe. Um, but you got to think fighter safety and from the ref's uh, perspective, um, I'm really on the fence about it. You know, at first I thought it was – it was uh, it was an okay call, but then watching the replay, I'm like, nah, it's a bad call. But yeah, I feel like I feel like if they were gonna, if he was gonna stop it, he should have stopped it immediately instead of like waiting for him to look like he's recovering and then stop it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because look, a lot of times guys get knocked out, and then you should stop it then for his safety. You take a shot in the head like that, you're talking, you know, possible concussion and brain damage or whatever, but. A lot of times, guys can get knocked out, and then 30 seconds later, they feel better, and they, they, they're back in the fight. So you're right. If he stopped it right away, no one would have complained because that was a horrendous yeah. thing, you know? Chris, Man, that Chris was said bad. the ref uh, smelled like cigarettes, and his, his breath smelled like alcohol. That Who was said my that? Ref too. That was my ref for uh, my, my first two fights, my first two oh, yeah? pro fights. Yeah. And um, – I, he stopped me. He actually stopped my, one of my um, good friends' fights too. Like my friend got dropped, and the moment he hit the ground, we just stopped it. I don't know. He's, he's, you got, you got, you got to be consistent. Either you're gonna stop fights right away, or you're gonna give it time. You know. So he's, it looks like he's going back and forth. Janelle, did you there's a lot of great ref, with referees. Keith Peterson. He's actually a good. He's he's. I like Keith. You know. He's ref a uh, fight. Two fights in mine. He refs the fight where I beat a guy half to death, and he refs the fight where I lost. Um, I lost with decision in the hometown. He ref both. Um, I like Keith, man, and I don't know, man. It's hard. It's it's a job, and people make mistakes. My thing, like Janelle said, if when he dropped, jump in right there. Fuck it. If you're mm -hmm. gonna jump in, they're a championship yeah. fight. They're fighting for world title. You gotta let them get beat to death. Like you literally have to. It's not a prelim fight. This is Dominic Cruz. He hasn't fought in three years. You gotta let him get fucked up you have to but if you're gonna stop it do it when he's when there's no 
You, you can't no leave question. no gray area. When he gets dropped with the knee, just jump in. Yeah. Be consistent. That's it. Just if That's you do it. it this fight, do it on the next fight. You know what I'm saying? Don't this fight you stop, you stop right, you step in right away, and then the next fight you step in when the guys you cover it. Like no, you yeah, I get it, I get it, you know I get it. it. You just gotta he gotta stick to it. Yeah, every time somebody drops, just jump in. I just <laughs> <That's it. laughs> <laughs> now honestly, look, why I like Keith Peterson in a weird way. I'm weird. Don't ask me. I like him because his stoppages look cool to me. So, for instance, like, if you watch Keith Peterson, he wears wrestling shoes, right? So, when he stops the fight, he'll literally, like, shoot in. You know, like, some other guys, will, like, 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 Dan Mergliata kind of gets, like, weary. And he, he'll, he like, he'll put his hand out. And he, like, kind of won't get in the fire. Keith Peterson will literally, like, shoot a double leg and grab your waist. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, chill, 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 chill. Make me look bad. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about the um, Tony Ferguson stoppage? What do you guys think about that one? Oh, that was great. Great stoppage. Yeah. 